This video is a response to a list of 12 reasons why you should abandon Windows for Linux that I found called, isn't it time to switch to Linux? 12 reasons to abandon Windows. I'll put the link in the description down below. It's part serious, part tongue in cheek, and it's intended to show that Linux is not the only alternative to the big two OSs. Windows will push updates at you whether you want them or not, and you will have no say. It's almost as if you are not in control of your own system. The famous clip of the weather forecast live on TV being interrupted by a message saying that the system needs to be updated is a joy to watch. I've seen Windows systems caught in a never-ending weekly cycle of update, failed update, undo update, and then reboot, try again. It's creepy at best, and disastrous at worst. Especially if that system is doing some important work and things go awry. But that's Windows, you know? You kind of expect that out from Redmond. But it's not limited to Windows. MacOS will nag you until you feel you have to update, even if you want to carry on using your system as it is. Even Linux has a rather shady way of getting you to update. Linux Mint proposed, and indeed may have already implemented, I'm not sure, that forced updates are the order of the day and Ubuntu snaps automatically update in the background, without your consent, unless you opt out to stop it, using workarounds, because uh, it's not exactly easy. Updating FreeBSD is always optional. It's recommended, of course, but optional. No forced updates here, and no nagging. And if you use ZFS, alongside a boot environment tool, you can make snapshots of your working system, then apply the updates, and if the updates don't work out, or a package isn't behaving as it should, you can simply roll back to a point before the breakage. It's simple, elegant, and invaluable. In the Microsoft Windows world, you can use Windows 10 for free, albeit with a degree of reduced functionality and a watermark, but you do need a Windows license to unlock the full feature set, and it's not cheap. MacOS isn't free either, it comes free with the cost of the machine, as does Windows in small circumstances, but it costs to buy a retail copy, if indeed you still can. And both add to the overall cost of the machine purchase. Both are proprietary, and both cannot be altered and distributed freely, so both are not free in any sense of the word. An alternative is Linux, which can be downloaded for free, can be altered, distributed to whoever you like, but, and here's the catch, the license requires that if you alter the code, add or remove anything, then that new code that you've created must also be shared. In a sense, you're not fully free with Linux either. Imagine this. A company makes a great product that has taken many, many hours to complete. It's improved parts, etc. But it has to be shared, even if that means a competitor who hasn't done the work can benefit. Hardly fair. Well, FreeBSD solves this. It's free as in beer, and free as in freedom to do with the code as you see fit. Made a world-beating alteration? That's great. Keep it, use it. As long as the two simple lines of text are included as part of the BSD2 clause license, then all is good. And that's what makes it very attractive to some very big industry players. The license is as free as it can possibly be. Whatever the task you need to do on your computer. FreeBSD has you covered. There are native versions of all the popular applications you will need on a modern desktop or server. There are exceptions, of course, a cloud in an otherwise clear sky. And that is the absence of so-called big ticket items such as Adobe and Microsoft, etc., who haven't brought over their large, professional and expensive software to FreeBSD. But that's okay. There's a good chance you wouldn't need it anyway, as the open source alternatives are getting to a point now where they can fill in for the tasks you need to get done. But also, there's the Linuxulator, the Linux ABI, that allows FreeBSD to run some Linux software better than Linux itself can. And it's getting some major love, all thanks to the great sponsorship of the FreeBSD Foundation. And if you really need that Microsoft application, then try Wine. It, too, has been getting a lot of improvements lately, and you never know, it may work for you.
Without doubt, the largest target of attack is going to be Microsoft Windows, and this is because it has the largest install base, whether we like that or not. Not to mention it's the most lucrative. It would be interesting to know the total combined amount that is lost to even scams or malware. MacOS, although on a much smaller scale, is not immune, nor is Linux, which has had its fair share of possible threats over the years. Because FreeBSD has a smaller overall base of install, and that the OS itself is very tightly curated, it has a significant advantage in terms of escaping the threat of malware. It simply doesn't have some of the problems associated with technologies often found in the Linux world, such as System D, which, as it spreads through this distro's ecosphere, brings the wider target area that virus and malware thrive on. The FreeBSD core OS is created, managed, and updated to a very high standard by the FreeBSD project, and even third-party ports and packages are vetted closely. The possible attack vector is very narrow, and not something that makes FreeBSD an attractive target. Windows and MacOS are closely tied to the users having either a Microsoft account or an Apple account, and this information is valuable indeed to those large organizations. From key logging to captured voice print, there are many, many justified concerns about the two leading OSs. Linux has a less than clean history with data collecting, although it has to be said that it's not on the same scale. Ubuntu 18.04 famously collected data about PC's hardware and software, which packages you have installed and applications that crash, sending them all to Ubuntu servers. You could opt out, but it was not exactly easy. And it wasn't until Ubuntu 20.04 that Ubuntu removed the infamous Amazon app, something that it had introduced in 12.10. FreeBSD doesn't require an account with ID to create a FreeBSD system, nor does it collect information of any kind, be it about your system or shopping habits. I don't know if Apple put advertisements on their desktop somewhere, but I'm sure there are some, shall we say, heavy hints to buy or use their services. Microsoft certainly does, having once inserted advertisements in, and banners into such rich advertising revenue streams, such as Solitaire and Minesweeper. Linux, well, Ubuntu also did this. A little differently, I grant you, but it was there nonetheless. The Amazon app, or the shopping lens as it was also known as, would come up with suggestions based around searches you had entered into the search bar. Crikey. Can you guess what I will say next? FreeBSD doesn't carry ads. In any form, it doesn't push any FreeBSD services at you. It doesn't collect data to suggest things for you or retroactively alter existing programs to put a message in front of your eyes. FreeBSD is a complete OS, not just the kernel. The tools, the core itself is one complete package and it's 100% open source. Because it's open source, if you possess the right skills, you can review, alter, and submit any changes to the FreeBSD project, which means that if there are any problems with the OS, it will be fixed swiftly. Whereas Windows and MacOS, well, you have to wait a while, and even then it may not get fixed. People will point and laugh that FreeBSD can't play games, and this isn't strictly true we may not have a native steam client like windows mac OS, or linux but we can use the linux one and run it very well indeed there are a few projects going on that are trying to make running steam easy in the freebsd there are the free games of course and a wide range of emulators for freebsd if you want to have a little retro gaming for the big ticket triple a games well even linux is out of luck but not freebsd well and i'm bending the definition here the PS4 and PS5, as well as the Nintendo Switch, run a version of FreeBSD. So it's funny as someone may claim that FreeBSD cannot run games, but they don't realise they are when they go on their games console. It used to be the case that Linux was always recommended as a way to go to revive all the PC hardware. And this was true for many years. Then it start to get fat, heavy, and the minimum spec for the average distro is not far from what Windows demands. This is something which means it isn't the first choice for reviving old PC hardware, unless you go for one of the niche distros like Puppy Linux. FreeBSD isn't bloated. It's lightweight, it manages its memory and resources very well, 
and is presented as bare bones for the user on the old system, where the user land utilities are added on a as-needed basis, resulting in a tailor-made, resource-friendly and fast system, perfect for those older systems where you might have otherwise thrown out. From Apple using bits of FreeBSD in its toolset, Microsoft having used FreeBSD to power Hotmail, Netflix using FreeBSD as part of its infrastructure, Sony and Nintendo using FreeBSD to power their consoles, and even NASA using FreeBSD for HPC or High Performance Computing and Networking Reliability. FreeBSD is in a lot more places than you can imagine. The UI in Windows and MacOS are, to all intents and purposes, pretty fixed affairs. You can change the colours, the wallpaper, but, but really what you see is what you get in terms of a desktop. And this, I think, is done to keep a consistent look across all the installs. So using it in the workplace will not be such a different experience as, say, working and using it at home, and vice versa. Linux and FreeBSD allow you to experience whatever you want, desktop or not. But the customizability of Linux only really goes skin deep in most circumstances, where installed apps are predetermined by the distro maker, and more importantly, running services you may not want, such as systemd. FreeBSD lets you create your own system. It provides you with the tools to make your system your own. You need a server, home theater PC, an emulation station. You can do anything you want, and it won't hold your hand. FreeBSD enables you to grow. Twenty-four-seven user support is, of course, available for Windows and MacOS at a price. If you are willing to pay, you can get excellent user support, and many people do, where you can get answers from highly certified engineers related to the topic you are questioning. Linux too has paid support from some of the biggest players, but that's not to say there isn't free support and community help for those free platforms. There are, and much of it is very good, but the community help or the free help can be somewhat toxic. That is, you have to be prepared to endure the almost inevitable RTFM, a rather blunt statement where the answer suggests that a new user should read the manual. You will find that FreeBSD community to be a healthier place, with people that are highly intelligent, polite, and more than likely able to help, as this is because for a long time there wasn't paid support service for FreeBSD. It was a matter of us all coming together, and users and developers, and helping each other to get things done. If you are wondering though, FreeBSD does have paid help and consultation. Clara, the company with some of the brightest minds in the FreeBSD world, can offer some great support for FreeBSD and ZFS. I'll leave you the link in the description box down below. So there you have it. 12 reasons why you should consider dropping Windows, MacOS or Linux. You can try FreeBSD by virtual box session, or can use a live desktop session by loading up NomadBSD or GhostBSD. Each option will leave your existing computer set up intact, and it's a great way to explore FreeBSD. Are my points valid? Do you agree? If you do, then please click the like button and leave and share your arguments, none too technical of course, as to why someone should come over to FreeBSD. Just for the record, I like Windows, I like MacOS, and I like Linux. <laughs>